Welcome to Ulster Tatler Interiors Meets the Experts. My name is Kelly Birch and I am the Deputy Editor of the Ulster Tatler. In this podcast, we talk to experts based in Northern Ireland from various design sectors. Whether your home needs a new kitchen or bathroom or a full interior makeover, our experts will give you the advice you need to make your house a home. Today, we chat to Glenn Wright from Wright's Design House. Wright's Design House is an award-winning kitchen design company based just outside Lisbon. Welcome, Glenn. So, Glenn, we're just going to talk a little bit about Wright's Design House. Um, I understand the company's been in business for over 50 years. How did it all get started? Yes, that's right, Kelly. It started in 1964. Uh, my father started it, so um, it, it's uh, a great privilege to be taking the reins up after after he retired um, there a short while ago. But um, back then, um, he was 21, and the first workshop was in the loft of his mother's house, actually, on the Ravenhill Road. And he used to make little pieces of furniture and, and, and different lower them on a rope down <laughs> from the top window. Uh, then the business grew and expanded and um, he moved to Money Ray. He rented a premises and then after that, he moved to the Windmill Road where where we really started to expand, or my father did. Back then, we were known as Be Right Joinery Works. So, uh, we did windows and stairs and uh, and uh, that end of things. And um, then we, we gradually moved into kitchens. Um, I must say it was great for me as a child, you know, coming home from school and, and learning the trade off my father. Um, it was great to, because I would know about windows and stairs um, from my childhood and things, which gives you good knowledge, you know, and, and even making uh, kitchen furniture that nowadays, you know. So, um, so no, that it did start back then. And it, 50 years on, um, it got to, I thought that we needed to, um, maybe rebrand and and what bet what better time to do that uh, on the 50th on coach my dad and had to have a very tactful conversation that I wasn't offending him you know and changing the name to from be right but but he, he loved the concept and um we, we haven't looked back ever since you know well you know it's uh we're attracting clients from all over Europe and and uh London and you know, so the, the business has, has really grown. So obviously you've been involved in the company for a very long time. What would you say is your current role at the moment with Wright's Design House? Yes, you're absolutely right. Um, whenever I was um, five, I was out doing me bits and pieces with, with, with dad. Um, that, that I fitted my first kitchen when I was 15 and my father got me my first business contract when I was 11, making oilstone boxes for a company called Scobian Junior. But nowadays, um, my, my my role is um, I, I heavily involved in the designing. I've got three designers that work alongside me. Um, I'm heavily involved in the workshop still, um, just in the, the production uh, of, of the furniture that, that we're designing. And um, yeah, but also day-to-day running of the business and scheduling things so so I've got quite a lot of roles in the business and I wouldn't have it any other way I'm still not afraid to get my, my sleeves rolled up whenever I need to and get down into the factory and uh, get back to back to my roots <laughs> and uh, so this is probably quite a difficult question when you do um, when you are involved in so many areas but what would be the best part of your job well, the, the best part of my job hasn't really changed. You know, it, it's it's talking to the client, listening to the client's needs. And, you know, whenever you, you can look at raw material and turn that into an end product for somebody's dream kitchen or, or dream bedroom or, or furniture, it's, there's the buzz that I get out of that is is unreal, you know, that you've, you've, you've done that yourself. You know, it, it still doesn't change to this day. For the feeling I get when... We, we go into one of our, our high-end kitchens, you know, and seeing the finished product to whenever I was making a wee bedside cabinet when I was when I was young, you know, still get the same buzz that, you know, you're you're fulfilling the, the, the requirements of, of your clients and, and making their life better. And it must be very nice as well to see a finished product after all your hard work as well. Absolutely. And and because we've we've made it ourselves generally, uh it you know, it's it's just there's a lovely sense of uh, accomplishment, and the guys in the factory will even agree that like they're they're so involved that 
whenever we do photo shoots, they, they can't wait to see the photo shoots to see the finished product. You know, we do do dry fits of our 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 projects in the factory. Um, so the, they see it to a certain extent, but to see it in its final final resting place or final home, you know, it's 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 lovely that that, the, that they're interested in and in, in doing and seeing that as well. And in your role, who would you say has acted as your biggest inspiration? Okay, the, the biggest inspiration, you know, the, you, you can be heavily influenced by by different people in the industry, like Mark Wilkinson, Clive Christian, things like that. But my biggest inspiration, to be honest, is my father. You know, he's the one that, that, that sparked the interest and taught me my trade. And, you know, I'm passing, I, I have four children of two girls and two boys, and, and they're showing great interest. Um, just... A couple of weeks ago, my oldest daughter Susanna, um, during lockdown there was was um, acknowledged and she, she entered into an under sixteen designer award over in a KBB awards over in London, and she, she actually um, was a finalist in that. So so that was uh, that was being that made me very proud that that, that she's um, continuing on with, with what she's learning from me as well, and and my two boys uh, down in the factory. At the weekends or, or any spare time I have to, to teach them the trade as well, and like they can they can edge kitchens and do brilliant amount of work at, at all the age they are of nine years old as well. So it's it's lovely to see that possibly a third generation will be coming along. It's nice to see as well that they're like yourself uh, picking up on it at a very young age. Yeah, that's it. I think I, I honestly think um, when you're young like you're like a wee sponge you you, you learn and you remember things um it's, it's so much better than possibly when when you're that wee bit older you know it's it's a it becomes second nature to you if you if if you learn it at a young age so that's what i find um myself anyway and then rice design house um is an award winning company i was just wondering if you could tell us a bit about the awards you used to have won over the years yeah, uh, yeah, we've been very privileged to be acknowledged as uh, retailer of the year at the last um, Irish Kitchen Awards. Um, so it's nice to get in the whole of Ireland that we were top retailer. Lovely accolade there, and I myself have, have picked up um, a designer of the year award in uh, two thousand seventeen. I think it was two thousand sixteen, maybe. Uh, we've been finalists uh, since two thousand twelve every year. Um, over in the KBB Awards, I mentioned that my daughter was finalist in there. Um, I myself have been a finalist uh, for two years in a row there, so it's in the top three. So, And then Designer Kitchen Awards is another one in London. We've been finalists for two years in a row there as well. So so getting these accolades um, and getting acknowledged by industry peers, um, you know, it does create a lot of confidence for our clients that you, when you come to Wright's Design House that you are dealing with um, an elite kitchen company or, or you know uh, product manufacturer because um there's a lot of competition out there and um just having that uh wee bit of reassurance that that the rights design house is known as one of the best companies in in the uk you know it, it's 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 a great honor my father he got a, a lifetime achievement award as well which was which was very uh, emotional night for us all you know for, that he got acknowledged as well so no it's uh we've done very well in the in the awards and it's uh it's 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 lovely to to accept these um accolades now and then obviously with a few awards to your name um you are situated in lisbon but i was just wondering then does has your name spread further than northern ireland and would you travel much with your job Absolutely, um, the world's a small place, you know. At now, uh, more so than ever, um, Northern Ireland is our, is our base, as you say, Lisburn at the Temple uh, Roundabout there. But uh, we're all over Ireland. Um, we're all over mainland. Like we're currently, we're involved in projects in Sandbanks, which is lovely. Uh, we're in London. Um, last year, we were in Andorra. You know, doing uh, kitchens and. We've done two in Spain as well, so, so we're all over Europe. You know, it's it's not. I, I love that as well. You know, it, it just it gives another wee challenge of of getting all the logistics right and uh, everything set up that you can go to different countries and um and you know spread the brand and let people know know about us. It sounds like you have a very rich uh, portfolio of projects. Um, tell us a wee bit about your favorite project that you've worked on. 
Yeah, well, well, again, like there's many different projects and it's hard to pinpoint one. Um, there was a project that we, we did do out in Andorra of late and the settings and the background was, was lovely and being involved in that. Um, although had a few sleepless nights, as you can imagine, you know, making sure that the products got out there not damaged and on time and you know, just um, trying to, to get everything to coordinate together with tradesmen out there with language barriers and things. So so it, it was fun, but the end product looked really good. But of late, um, I, I, I've uh, started another business. It's called Now Space. Um, it's a bespoke garage fit outs. So if you're into um, your DIY, if you're into your golf, or if you're into your gym, your home gym, we theme your garage to suit that. And during recent times that we've been in where gyms have been closed, we've been inundated with um, inquiries about that, um, which has been new for me. So we're, we're, we're building gym gear, weight racks and um, and that end of things. And it's just it's a wee bit different than than what um, the interiors of, of houses entail. Um, so so that's been refreshing and, and quite interesting to work on also. And what was your inspiration behind setting up Now Space? So the inspiration for that was um, I am 42 now and uh, in my late 30s, of, uh, well, my, mid, my mid-30s, I'd stopped playing rugby. I was into rugby and um, and I was always very active and, and a sporty person. So once that stopped and, and work sort of uh, took over a wee bit or my body wasn't letting me play rugby would be a better way to put it. <laughs> I, I noticed I was putting on a few pounds, so uh, I was involved with uh, clients in, in Belfast and and uh, Daryl, um, the husband, was a personal trainer or is a personal trainer. So um, as part of the deal, um, <laughs> we uh, we negotiated and, and he said, right, we'll, we'll, we'll give you 10 free uh, training sessions. So, so he came out to my house and into my garage and I started at a few weights sitting about, but there was lawnmowers um, and having four kids, as you can imagine, there's bikes and toys and everything lying everywhere. And I had to apologize. I said, Daryl, listen, sorry about the state of this place, you know, um, but, uh, you know, we'll have to just work with what we have. And, and his, his answer to me was, you know, Glenn, don't worry about it because most people's garages are the same. And as soon as he said that, I, I sort of thought, right, okay, well, um, what I'm thinking of doing here is I'm going to build a, a rig, you know, for to put my weights on and, and so we can do our bench press and, and different things. He goes, yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. We'll do that. And then I said, well, I'll probably do a wee bit of storage um, in for the bikes and hide that behind for the mirrors and, and things. And and uh, then I can do my wee DIY place and behind I'll hide that. And it just sort of off and he goes, Ben, there's so many of my clients um, would be really interested in this, you know, and, and have their garages looking really good so it sort of developed from me having a personal trainer a personal trainer telling me how many houses and clients that he, he's in where what i'm doing in mine you know would be great for them you know so developed from that so it's not just gyms you know we're into doing golf and we're into we've got golf lockers with putting greens um inside your garage you know we've got valentin bays for car enthusiasts you know so your your all your products are put in the back of doors it's just really really cool there's a cool wee website there um so but um no it's uh that that's where the inspiration came from so it was very much a collaboration between you and your personal trainer um yes he's, find, he's like, now we... a, a partner in the business it's, it's myself and daryl started this standalone business and it is the only one in, in ireland which offers what we do you know in the in the, the fit outs for garages there Wonderful. And would you find that collaboration something that you would do a lot in your job uh, with Wright's Design House as well? Absolutely. Um, we're very honoured to be working with all the the, the big names in, in interior design, you know. So, um, and it's it's lovely that they have confidence in Wright's Design House brand uh, to bring them to the showroom, um, talk through briefs and um, have a, a cup of coffee and and chats about whatever projects are required, you know. So we we um, but we're all very used to, to working with designers because um, it's lovely seeing different people's approaches to design as well. And and again, that goes back to to what we really enjoy is seeing end products, uh, you know, of what, what we're manufacturing. 
And then for often when we think of about kitchens, you think of just doing your kitchen up. But if somebody's looking to get a new kitchen as part of an extension or in a new build, at what stage would you recommend clients need to start talking to their kitchen designer? Would it be sort of before architects or after architects? Well, a wee bit of both, actually. It, it, it does no harm to have a wee sit down, um, a rough sketch of what the the kitchen requirements are, you know, because um, and what the brief is off the client, you know, what the wish list is, you know, um, and and different appliances and and you know what their lifestyles like because that that can very much influence the architect of where windows are going and and um, you know the the different areas of the space where, where it's required for kitchen living and dining, you know. So, um, but um, yeah, so beginning before during you know you can never be too early yeah so very much a it's quite a long dialogue sort of through the whole process yeah yep no but uh and you know at rights again as far as collaboration with with, with architects are we, we, we're we're honored to be involved with with uh, a few big names and uh it's uh you know it's 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 an honor you know to be involved in some of these projects that we're, we are involved in at the moment. So kitchens are very much the heart of the home. And in your opinion, what makes a good kitchen? Uh, well, function. Um, you, you, function would be the the, the, uh, the, the main thing for, for me, because uh, if you get the function right, the, the aesthetics and all will, will fall into place after. And again, that is, um, that is, achieved by listening to, to your clients needs you know some people will prefer to, to cook on a range cooker and have a lovely big overmantle around it you know um other people will will, will want the the eye level ovens and and the induction hobs and, and, and different things so then you've, you need all your consumables in, in one area of the kitchen you know you want your larder placed very close to your fridge so you're not running round every corner of the kitchen trying to get ingredients to make to make your dinner um, again round your sink you want your dishwasher your integrated bin you know it, it's all about function there um, and then as I said the, the aesthetics and, and the look of the kitchen will, will fall into place after that. So for a client who's looking to get a new kitchen what would be your top three tips that they should consider? Well top three tips um, if you're getting a new kitchen is do a wee bit of research um, before you, you would come to a, a studio, if you can. Um, you know, have a few images of, of, of different materials or different kitchens that, that you like to look off because from a designer's point of view, that's really, really helpful because um, we know what way, what route to take them, you know. So because I, I, we have clients coming in and they would say, I want a very contemporary design and their contemporary and, and our contemporary is maybe two polar opposites you know so uh, if we see pictures um we we can we can sort of you know go down the right route then um second thing would be to again going on the appliances because they're the main thing in, in a kitchen there is is um try and um make a decision on whether you would like eye level appliances or, or would you like to cook on a range um there's pros and cons to, to both you know there's there's no right or wrong answer it's just um it's what the what, what suits the client best because uh, then we know wh where they have to be positioned in the space that's, that's required and, and and the third thing is know your budget because um, whenever we're asking clients for a budget it's not it's, it's for no other reason than to gauge what product to use you know so because like I could get you uh, a range at five or six hundred pounds and I could get your range at twenty eight thousand pounds you know so it's a, there's a big, big difference there. Uh, so knowing what you want to spend is always very useful to the designer and, and share that with the designer because um, if, the only reason why you're being asked that is to, to know, so he knows uh, or we know what, what, what product to choose. And what would you say are the latest trends in kitchen design at the minute? And la latest trends at the moment, um, it, it's, it's pretty cool. Like I, I would... Um, well, I would, I would pride myself on going to, to Europe and to Italy and Germany just because they tend to be maybe two or three years ahead of the UK. So at the last, um, my last exhibition there, 
um, it, it, it was all handless is, is, is coming through there, um, which is very contemporary, you know, it's very slick, but it's starting to be combined with a shaker style cabinet. So you're trying, you're, you're starting to see the, the, the classic sort of timeless uh, hand painted finish being combined with the, the, the handless contemporary. So um, it's, uh, it's really cool to see that. And then there's, there's different textures being used now, um, ceramics and quartz, like doors are being made out of quartz and, I'm involved in a project there at the moment in Dublin on a 300-year-old listed building where the top half of the island is totally made from marble, doors and all, and the bottom half is is painted shaker uh, in frame cabinet. So it's a lovely combination of both. And I haven't seen this done before anywhere, so I'm very excited about that as well. Um, so watch the watch the Ulster Tatler for that one. <laughs> Definitely. I think there could be a, a house feature in there. <laughs> indeed, yes, indeed. I know you talked a little bit about appliances making up a large chunk of the kitchen. Um, are there any new advances in technology that you think our listeners would like to hear about in regards to their kitchens? Yeah, well, advances even in appliances. You know, today it's all a smart world and everything is, uh, you know, the you just have to speak to tell appliances what to do. Um I don't want to say what that is because something will be activated in my house here and you'll hear it in the backgrounds. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yes, you, you can, you can just tell your oven to preheat to whatever you know temperature you want it to do. And you can tell your coffee machine to, to make, make me a coffee. You, you know, it's a, uh, it's, it's really, really cool. And you know, there's, there's different apps and fridges that if you're in the supermarket and you're not sure that if you've got milk or not, that, there's a camera inside the fridge so you can access that on your phone to see if you need anything. You know, it, it's, it's wonderful, scary. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I, think- I know it's, it's re- really, really good. And then on recycling, you know, it's, it's a big thing in the world we live in now too. It's the, the uh, systems and uh, products that are available for that. You know, it, it's really good. And then you, you've got water taps there that, that you, the boiling hot water taps nearly, a norm but now we, we can go into cool sparkling water with your on the same tap and chilled filtered water you know all out of one tap you know it's it's really cool it really is it's definitely a world of new possibilities anyway well, it's a long step from my father drawing a few lines on the back of a piece of paper and and uh, that was about the height of of how your 3d presentation happened back then you know so you, you weren't sure what you were getting but <laughs> nowadays we have virtual reality walkthroughs um in our showroom where you actually put on a headset and you can walk around your kitchen which is really really cool so so there's no assumption you know you know exactly what you're getting you know i can actually have your the client's family photo on, in a bookcase you know it's uh it's really cool the amount of detail that we we go into and then after that initial sort of planning stage um, and the 3D walkthrough, how long on average would it take for a kitchen to be put into place from start to finish? Well, it, it, it totally depends on the client. You know, fr- from ordering, like today we're at the, in June, so like it depends what product as well because we pride ourselves in working in all sectors off the market. But if you're going for a higher end in frame, you know, you're, you're, you're looking three months down the line with, with ourselves. Um but if you're going for something that's just not as high level, like our schedule, our work schedule, like we have somebody employed um, to 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 work the schedule basically because it keeps changing. Um, some houses are meant to be ready, some houses aren't, but uh, ready when they're meant to be, you know. So you have to keep adapting to that. But a, a general rule would be um, for for uh, a mid level product. There, you're you're probably um, in and around ten weeks. And when you're thinking of putting in a kitchen, is there any pitfalls that our listeners should watch out for? Pitfalls that listeners should look out for when they're ordering a kitchen? Yeah, ordering a kitchen or not leaving themselves enough time, I suppose, to, yeah, to well, get a well, kitchen. You, 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 you've, you've hit the nail on the head there. It's, it's give yourself plenty of time uh, to absorb the information that that your designer is going to give you um and um investigate all the the possibilities in the design you know because um in different spaces there's 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 many ways to have good designs and it's just to pick the the 
the correct one for for yourself um and also understand the materials that that you're 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 interested in as well and how things are put together don't be afraid to ask questions because even cabinet doors there's there's many different ways that a cabinet door can be fitted on the cabinet you know um so it's just understanding just all products is is key there also and then with um rights design house and also now space you sound like a very busy man what do you like to do when you get some spare time uh well i, I am very busy with, with the two businesses um in my spare time i, I like to work out in, in my, the lovely gym that i have uh uh, when when I get time to do that after having four kids, you know, so um, if, if I'm not playing football uh, with the the boys in the garden, we're 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 doing family things just with the with the kids, um, which is great crack too. Um, but um, for any hobbies that I have myself, um, we've been working out, and I've actually signed up for the perennials, uh, which is a uh, over 40 rugby team. So I might be making a wee comeback there whenever I'm able to run the length of myself again. <laughs> we'll call it the comeback tour then. That's it. Yes, indeed. <laughs> I'll be on the British Lions uh, very soon. Yep. <laughs> we'll have to definitely keep an eye out for you. <laughs> I wouldn't I wouldn't waste too much time. I don't think it's... <laughs> <laughs> um, finally, Glenn, if people want to find out a bit more about the companies, how's the best way to contact you? Well, the, be- the best thing to do is get on the websites um, and on the websites there's uh, email addresses um, that uh, that uh, will be responded to very quickly. Um, Rights Design House uh, website is uh, rightsdesignhouse.com, you know, and the Now Space website is um, Now Space, it's N-E-U space N-I, so it's now space N-I.com, so but there's a link from Rights Design House to the, to the other wee business as well. So um, that's the best way to get in touch with us. That's great, Glenn. Well, many thanks for taking the time to share your knowledge with our listeners. That's it from me, Kelly Birch. I hope you enjoyed our podcast and tune in again for more expert advice from our experts.